Hi everyone, today on QRS TV, we're gonna look at this ECG tracing from a dog. This is uh, definitely one from the archives. I don't even recall the signalment beyond species. So I know it's a dog. Um, so we have a nine lead ECG. And the first thing I wanna do is just orient you to the fact that the top three lines that are displaying those nine leads are inscribed at 25 millimeters per second. And the bottom line is a lead to rhythm strip at 50 millimeters per second. So that's why it's more spread out relative to the top three lines. Um, so if we look at some of our common questions, um, asking ourselves heart rate, rhythm, um, and uh, whether all of our normal waveforms are present, Let's run through a few of these questions, and I'm going to do that on um, the top three lines. And so if I start there, firstly, heart rate at 25 millimeters per second using my 300 rule. Since my instantaneous heartbeats are about three large boxes apart, I know my heart rate is, is 100. Remember, 300, 150, 100 is the rule. Um, so that's pretty simple. And my rhythm does look pretty regular. Uh, are there P's for every QRS? I've got arrows here above what I identify as my P waves all the way across. And even when I have a question about a P wave, um, as, as I've shown above the fifth arrow from the left, when I look down or up in a simultaneous lead, I can certainly find an identifiable P wave. So I know they're there, even when sometimes the trace gets a bit messy. I can easily identify all my QRS complexes all the way across. And I think, you know, within a lead, the P waves look reasonably the same and the QRSs look reasonably the same. Again, within a particular lead, of course, they're changing as the lead changes um, as we move from left to right. Um, the PR intervals look uh, like this activity is associated. The Ps are positive in lead two. So, I really do quickly think that this looks like a normal sinus rhythm, um, at least in that top section. So let's move to this bottom section here. I'm starting on the left-hand side and you know I am observing that things look a little more messy here. Um, I know from lead two in the top three lines, specifically on that second line, I know what the PQRST should look like. And so when I sort of play the matching game down here along the bottom, you know, the QRSs look pretty identifiable, um, but the P's and the baseline and the T's in between um, looks like there's a lot of uh, additional deflections there. So suspicious for some overlying um, artifact. And then when I move to sort of the next chunk over, it gets even, um, you know, more troublesome in that my, my normal PQRST morphology has sort of disappeared on me. And then finally, I've got this one lonely beat at the end that looks quite normal. Um, so that's identifiable and, and, and looks like it should in lead two. So let's come back to this midsection again. And, you know, I'm trying to make sense of all these waveforms, but if I just take a moment to look at my R to R interval, so, so the rhythmic nature of, of the rhythm that I identified above, in fact, I'm pretty sure that I can identify sharp deflections moving from left to right that match that R to R rhythm. So I actually think that we have normal complexes buried within that garbagey section in the box. Um, and sometimes that garbage gets really clever. So I've put a box around here where on first glance, you know, that looks like a classing look, classic looking ventricular premature complex or VPC. Um, so if we're not paying attention, Sometimes, you know, these wide and bizarre deflections, we can jump to the conclusion of them being premature beats or, or VTAC. But yet, I think we have a case here where, you know, it, it's an imposter for a VPC. And in fact, in this section, you know, we can identify our normal complexes amongst the garbage. There are these wide um, and large um, rhythmic deflections that represent artifact superimposed on a normal sinus rhythm and artifact represented by rhythmic motion of a limb, for example, would be something that could quite easily um, produce this type of artifact. So the lesson here today is, you know, differentiating what's real from what's artifact is a big part of ECG interpretation. And, you know, look amongst the trash 
for waveforms that have a rhythmicity um, much like the cleaner stuff on either side and, and see if you can find those normal heartbeats in amongst the garbage and don't fall for the imposters. All right. Hope that helped. Bye-bye. See you next time.